Tom Martino Help. on 630 KHOW, Denver's talk station. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. And I do Hi, Tom Martino, your troubleshooter, 303-713-TALK. 303-713-8255, also 303-MARTINO for car questions, 303 303- 627-8466. Fred has a car question. We have Rolly Purifoy with us from Purifoy Chevrolet and Ron Shaw from Affordable Transmissions. Go ahead, uh, Fred. What's your question, sir? Yeah, quick question for yeah. you. Um, I'm in the market for a used car, and my question is if I find one at a dealer or even just a private owner, and I want to have it inspected by you know an independent shop, if I bring it to an independent shop, um, would I be expected to pay for that yes. inspection out of my pocket? Or yes. Would I... You would have to pay for sure. it. Sure. Okay. If you're going to take it off a guy's lot and and uh, have it looked at by somebody, I think you're just trying to, but well, you're spending a little kind of like insurance money. Right, right. And it shouldn't be that much money for a check over. Yeah, well, somebody's probably going to charge you an hour of diagnostics, and that's going to probably run somewhere between 75 and 125 bucks, somewhere like that. It's money well spent, I'll tell you, when you're talking about a car. And you're talking, it depends. Now, if you're buying a beater, I mean, so what? It, it really depends. It depends. But, but 100 bucks is well spent, even if you're spending only five grand on a car. Okay, and, and really, nowadays, anything under five grand is junk because well, of yeah, you're not cash getting for a lot. You're not getting a lot. But, you know, pull wheels, I mean, they'll, they'll do things that uh, you wouldn't be able to do in your own driveway. Let's talk to Lorraine again. Her dad, 101 years old, scammed out of 18 grand. If you look on the Internet, there's all kinds of blogs and articles about universal Internet experts being scammed, being scammers. Did you know that? No, I couldn't find anything there. Oh, I my goodness. It. What, are you kidding I, me? I looked, no, well, I just didn't. I, I looked under the Better Business Bureau in Arizona. You, all you do is Google their name, and it comes up. They got all kinds of reports on them. These guys are ripoffs. They yeah. scam people out of money for nothing. And you know what? We called them. They said they would call us back. I want to give out the number because here's why. A lot of times people don't realize that we actually have an audience listening that cares and that we're going to spread their name around. So, uh, Chris, give us the name. Uh, give us the name of this play, uh, excuse me, the number of universal internet experts and tell them you, you heard about the 101 year old man that was scammed out of 18 grand. Go ahead, Chris. What's the number? Okay. The number is 877-236-3990. Okay. So it's 877-236-3990. Tell him you heard about it on my show about a 101 year old man scammed out of eighteen thousand dollars so you know what if your dad's 101 years old there's no way that he authorized this you know they they tricked him and and even if he did get it what did they did you call the company and ask what he got for the money they said advertising what kind of advertising they didn't uh, i couldn't talk to anybody really in charge this was the receptionist and um yeah that's what we get it's a scam yeah. in my opinion this is Absolutely. one big scam yeah, what is he advertising <laughs> yeah no it's a scam it makes me sick that people are like this preying on old people preying on everyone really but taking advantage of old people if you feel the same way let them know 877-236-3990 i don't want you to call and be vulgar you call and say look i'm listening to this consumer show on radio in denver it's got a very large audience we're talking about a 101 year old man that was scammed at 18 grand you guys better make it right 877-236-3990 and we should keep their name up and we should keep reminding people to call them 877-236-3990 877-236-3990. How do outfits like that get around the law? I mean, why aren't they just shut down and jailed? And I don't know. I let's, don't understand that. Let's talk to Jeff who says he has a screaming deal. Jeff, quickly, please. What's your screaming deal? It has Hello. to do with cars? Yes, it does. Um, got me a little off guard there. Um, well, what do you got, sir? Okay, we got transponder keys and we have remotes for cars. Okay, and these are expensive normally. They normally vary all over the place. And right. With a purchase of two keys or two remotes, we'll do the programming for free. Now, so does that really save them money? Give me an it idea. Saves a what fortune, it, but I guess they're the company, so they know who's calling. What's that? Oh, I will City in a second. City Lock and Boulder. I, I, will, I will first. Okay. City Lock and Boulder. But yes. you will do Denver Metro? No, they bring in the car to me. Okay, they bring the car to you. They buy two keys and a remote? They buy two keys or two remotes, and the programming is free. Tell me about the programming. What would this normally cost in a place okay. that they had it done? All right. On the remotes, 
the programming is generally either $25 if it has what's called onboard programming or $50 if it's done with a scan tool. On the keys, the programming can run from $25 to $100. And what do the keys themselves cost? The keys vary all over the place, uh, $75 up to $300, but most of them are $75. And what about the remotes? The The second key they actually get a discount on, even though they're getting the programming thrown in. And what what about the remotes? The remotes start at $50. Most of them are between 50 and 100. So the screaming deal is they get programming free and they get a break on their second key. And they're all OEM uh, remotes. All the keys are new. They're not rechipped. They're not salvaged. They're not recycled. Okay. And how do they get in touch with you, Jeff? Uh, We're in Boulder at City Lock at 303-444-4407. Or because the phone's going to go crazy in a minute, they can go online to my website. And just from there, send me an email link and... They'll be locked in on the price. Okay. What is it? City Lock? It's CityLockUSA.com. CityLockUSA.com. Let me tell you why that's important. Right now, if you lose a key, you lost a lot of money. I got to tell you, folks, you better keep keys in a safe place. They're no longer just They're normal expensive. keys. They're very expensive, and programming is added to it, especially if you ever lose your codes and, and your battery goes bad or something goes bad with your system. I had to spend a ton of money one time on a car because of that, and he's going to do first key, uh, two keys. You get the you get the uh, programming free and a discount on the second key or two remotes same deal free programming city lock three zero three four 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 forty four zero seven thank you Jeff appreciate it uh, we always love screaming deals Al's got a question go ahead Al what's your question Al what's happening Al's listening can't blame him it's a good show Al yeah uh, turn your radio down sir thank you okay all right what's happening man. Hey, Tom, I got a question for you and Roly. Roly's uh, here. Okay, my daughter got a uh, G6 um, 2006 uh, Pontiac, and um, twice this happened to her where I guess the steering just went out on her, and it's, you got, it's manual real hard, and I found out it was electric. And she just got a letter in the mail the other day that it was a recall about the steering problem, and right. they said I could take it to any GM dealer, and I wanted to see if you know if I could bring it up there to Roly. Do you guys do yeah, it? Really? I think I think we probably could cross do that on that uh, on that recall because they're doing it to all the Cobalts and the G sixes and. What's wrong uh, with them, uh, Roly? It's a uh, well. They've decided this uh, the steering box on that the rack and everything is an electric rack. And they've had some issues with that, so they're going to they're just going to replace them all. What does electric rack mean? It's done by electricity. It's a little it's a little motor in there that, really? that runs everything. Wow. So that's how you're steering. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's like fly by wire. Kind of. Well, it's the same type of deal. I mean, we're going to see a lot more of that kind of stuff. Where Rather than know, direct mechanical. Right. Why is that? It's lighter, and it, it, mainly it's lighter. And it's uh, now that the technology and the computerization is all there, that they can tie all these to a body control module. Wow. And everything interacts with each other. It, I don't see know, more, we'll see more and more of that. I know. There's just something about it that you think, whoa, you know? All the mechanical linkages and stuff. Well, they'll still have tie rods and stuff like that. That's going to stay, but... But it cuts down a lot on oh, the yeah. mechanics? Well, yeah, on the, on the weight of the car. Everything's so weight conscious. Boy, that's because of mileage, too, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Let's talk to Judy. Judy, what's going on with you? Hi, Judy. Hi, Tom. Um, I have a compliment for Rolly and his dealership. What is I it? Called, I called you guys two weeks ago. My Ford 17-year-old Ford. son's 2002 Ford Escape just did not run. Yes, I remember. And I so remember we that. Took it Yep, we took it up to um, Jerry and then James, the mechanic. Yeah, because you kind of live, you kind of live on the outskirts, right? Yep, Watkins. Right, outskirts. right. Um, I am a customer for life, Rolly. <laughs> well, thank you. Did they take um, care of the car? No, oh, I'm sorry. Did they take care of the car? They did. Well, they diagnosed it for two and a half hours. James was a wonderful mechanic. Jerry was very um, cordial. It was a catalytic catalytic converter was clogged. No, that's really? What, uh, Jerry had told me about that. Yeah. Wow. I yeah. see. I love that, and that's that's. Thank you, Judy, for that. She's a customer for life. See, Roly, a lot of times we've had this happen where people go to get something diagnosed, and they can't find it. You guys find it. There's an art to diagnosis. Well, if you got put enough people's hands on, I mean, Robin would tell you about the, in his shop. That, Ron, uh, Ron would tell you that, that you get enough people involved, and you've probably got great people and. You know, sooner or later, somebody's going to have a clue. Sooner or later, yes. Or you've seen it before. That's what yeah. it, when it comes to transmissions, if you've done enough of them, you've seen it before, That's right? Correct. Yeah. And I got to say, on the escape, when she called in a couple of weeks ago, by no means would I have been leaning towards a catalytic converter. No, just escape. by the way she talked. You know, 
So mm-hmm. what do you do? What do you do with diagnosis? What do you do? Where do you start? Now with computers, you can go to a computer or not? Well, first thing, if it's computerized or anything, you plug in like a tech two or some type of a scan device and it will give you some where to give start you, looking. It does and give you an indication. You know, and everybody says, well, I don't want these cards, all this computerization and everything. Well, no, we're, we're a lot better off because we can pinpoint things a lot faster. Yeah. And I mean, it's through the whole, the body control modules and ECMs, everything's all integrated with each other. And you can tell transmission problems, engine problems, overall electrical and, and you know, drivability stuff pretty quick if you know what you're doing. Do you know how to, do you know how to use those scanners now? I, I know how to get, be data dangerous with them and that's about it but okay are. now um in the old days and and even now though it all comes down to fuel spark or air right pretty much so those three aren't they the, isn't that what we used to look for all the time is it yeah, getting the, fuel, real, getting the real spark, basic getting thing, air yeah mm-hmm. you fuel and spark was the basics you know and then air for, right. for a motor to run right and now but it's uh, it's a little bit different deal now with everything that's controlled by the computer you know, because but it still, fuel delivery it still comes and, down and, to those and, basics. Still sure. comes down to those basics. 303-713-TALK. Zach's got a plumber issue. Go ahead, Zach. What's going on? Z- Zach, what's going on with your plumber? Yeah, hey, man. Well, I, I went to go to work for this guy. Yeah. Worked for him for about two weeks. Um, he paid me the first week, and then all of a sudden he just disappeared, and I've been, I've been trying to call him. He just disappeared? Him. Well, he didn't just disappear. He... He sent me text messages saying that I'm harassing him, um, trying to get my paycheck. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so you stopped working for him, tried to get paid, then he told you to leave him alone. Well, pretty much what happened was is he, said, he, he sent me a text message saying, yeah. hey, wh- why don't you come to work for me you know, on Monday, which was payday. And uh, he said, I'll let you know when to show up for work. And then I didn't hear from him for like two or three days. How did he find out about you? Um, well, I got the job from a friend of mine who leases a building from him. Okay, so okay. So you got a job, and the guy texted you said, come to work for me. You went to work for him. Did he ever pay you? He paid me for one week. How yes, much does I, he owe you? He owes me $400. All right, hold on a second. We'll come right back. Did we call this guy? Let's call this plumber and find out where his money is. We have more right after this. Hello, Tom Martino, your troubleshooter. Mike's hot under the collar, Rolly. Yeah, I heard he Hot did. <laughs> under the collar. He says... Uh, no, you can't say that, Tom. He says the guy is a... Um, He's an orifice. Can we say <laughs> foreign? He's a foreign ice hole? I, ice? Yeah. Okay. 303-713-TALK. 303-713-8255. Okay, now, <laughs> you called him. This plumber guy, Zach, we call this plumber. He's nasty. He's, well, hey, he by started the way, off real nice. I, I will say that. He said, you know, Zach didn't show up uh, oh. on payday. So they he tried started mailing out. the check out, um, no, 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 and no. it he, came back. Hold, hold on. Then what? He no, said, no, no. Okay, this is what he did. But hold on. Let him finish. Let Mike finish for this guy. Okay. And it was okay. returned okay. with a bad address. Okay, for sure. Yeah. And, and then he what? said if they get a good address, you know, he'll get it to them. But then he started laying into me that, you know, if we say anything about him, if we talk about him, he's going right. to sue Martina, good, good, this good. Hold and on. that. Go, hold on. What's the name of his company? This company is Hold on. I'm asking Mike. What's the name? Well, uh, Zach told me it was called Your Plumber in Denver, but when you search him on the BBB by phone number, it comes up with Good Deal Services with a rating that sounds like pfft. It's okay, an now, F. Good Deal Services. And, and uh, what company did you work for, Zach? I worked for Your Plumber in Denver. Your Plumber in Denver. And what's his name? His name is Ethan Abbott. Abbott? Abbott. A-B-T-T. Abbott. A-B-B-O-T. A-B-B-O-T, probably. Okay. Or O-T-T. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, Ethan. So, let me just tell Ethan, Your Plumber in Denver. We don't know what that's rated, but his phone number comes up as Good Deal Services, and he okay. has an F on the Better Business Bureau. And, Mike, do they elaborate on that? And by the way, uh, if Ethan needs to spell my name, it's M A R T I N O, um, because I can say anything I want that is true because it's a free country. They say the reason it's. An I F- can even say lies, but I'd be stupid to do that. Go ahead. Seven Mike. complaints filed against the business, failure to respond to five complaints against this okay. business. So, seven complaints, failure to respond against five. And they say he's also done business as API Restoration, Good Deal Plumbing, and Associated Professionals. Exactly. Okay. And, and you know what? The, the guy. Um, 
he he is just I mean like somebody refused to pay him.